these really were found in a scrap bin. And I, I mean, they kind of look like they might have been some posts, you know, for some canopies or something like that. Who cares? They are one eighth inch, one by one square aluminum. And at two bucks a pop, that is a killer deal. And so I'm not complaining that I have to clean them up. Another one of my favorite tools, not sponsored, is the Evolution 14 inch miter chop saw. This thing is a beast and makes light work of cutting aluminum and even steel. Now I do have the orange colored blade on there, which is the multi-material cutting blade. It says it can do aluminum and it does. Now I would say not quite as well as their turquoise aluminum dedicated blade. That thing makes the aluminum cuts just perfect and right on. I I didn't really realize I was going to have this many cuts. I thought this was going to be a simple little maybe eight piece box structure. Anyway, you'll see here coming up that I added one or two extra features. The one thing I do love, other than all those clamps that they've included, is the angled stops it has for the mitered cuts. One of those is obviously a 45 degree and they just have it right on to where you don't have to really even measure afterwards. You know that your welds are gonna be set up perfectly for a perfect square box. If you had a good eye when I was cleaning these up, you might have noticed that some of the, well, not some of them, all of them, they had a cambered or arch uh, to them. Uh, I'm assuming it was probably for the strength, you know, just like what you get with your semi-trailers, same deal. Uh, now I thought, hey, I'm gonna be cutting these up, so maybe if I clamp them down good enough, then maybe it would self-relieve and, and straighten itself out. Didn't quite work out that way, but I mean, since we're not building a race car chassis here, I got it to work well enough. Uh, what's next, uh, the tack welds, or why does it sound so funny? Huh? Let's go with the tack welds. If you'll notice, I'm just doing a very small weld in all of the corners. This is another thing that you'll want to do in welding frames. That's because welding, it distorts your metal because it's heating up and then cooling. So like with anything, it will, you know, expand and contract so as to not get a wavy prinkle, prinkle, not to get a wavy pringle type chip out of your frame. You do small tack welds and that allows your piece to be held in place until you go through and do the full weld. Not that I do it every time, but it is good to practice welding the joints that distort the least first. That would be these top butt joints. And then you'll see later on that I go in and do the outside corners and then the fillets last. Those definitely pull the most. And you'll notice that I'm going from the outside in. Um, don't look at all of the welds because really it has to do with how the weld is set up and my positioning to make it on which way I'm actually welding that joint. The previous frame was the top. Now this is actually gonna be the base. If you look closely, then you'll notice that this is actually gonna be an opened box. Uh, you know, I didn't make mitered cuts to make it enclosed. I did think through and purposely did this for my base, and that's because I had casters that actually had some threaded studs that were only an inch long. So I didn't have a way of getting those up through. I didn't want to make another bracket or any other type of deal that way. I wanted to be able to stick the nut in there nice and easy and be done. And then second fold, it was to show you another way of doing a frame. This is definitely a lot easier, just making some straight 90 cuts and then the weld joints are, you know, not too bad. It's technically a groove weld right there that you just saw, but they don't look as nice as a nice sharp mitered corner. So, you know, it depends on what project and if it's being shown off or not. Now on to why does it sound like that? You know, this definitely isn't your typical bacon frying MIG type welding. This is TIG welding, but more in particular, it is AC TIG welding. And who cares? Why do you have to have it for this? Well, as mentioned, I picked up some scrap aluminum and aluminum is one of those, you know, special type of animals that they feel like they need to be different. And they are. So aluminum has an oxide layer on top of it and you actually need to break that down to be able to get a weld into the parent material. Thus, with AC welding, it does that with the alternating current. 
So on one of the cycles, it actually is a cleaning action that cleans the weld away from, or the oxide layer off. Then you can go in there and then it makes the weld. I took it easy on the foot pedal, actually slowing it down so you can see the oxide layer breaking apart, which then in turn allows you to create that weld with the other half of the cycle. So what's the big deal? Well, it pretty much just means it's a more expensive machine and takes more practice and technique to get good at it. But there are tons of projects and nice jobs out there that if you are a good aluminum welder, it is a sweet process to know and have in your back pocket. The dimensions thus far for this box frame are 18 inches by 24 by 30 high. Now, there wasn't anything special with those. It's really just I wanted something that would be able to fit the pizza oven on top and then something high enough that I didn't have to be bending over so much pulling them in and out. So, I mean, really, it's kind of whatever you come up with would work. Now, this is where I got into some of the extra little features that I hadn't even really planned out until I got this far. I did know I probably wanted some sort of stand for my propane tank. This is one of those. You could easily modify this if you have a pizza oven or something similar that is a wood burning one. There's tons of them out there. So maybe make a little shelf for some extra wood and that would work just fine as well. Now I had measured this a couple times because I had the idea of kind of getting my shelf and making a little cutout for it, which you'll see here shortly where I did. And I didn't want to have, you know, the propane tank chained down to anything. So I kind of wanted it enclosed on within the shelf. And so the height for this, I guess, support bar, what we'll call it, or the shelf support, uh, that's where it came up with. It's really just the height of the neck of the propane bottle. Now, a couple of things that I may or not have shown the details of. I'm using my ESOB 205 Rebel, and that's because it is an AC-DC welder. Now, the TIG Torch setup, it's a number five cup with a stubby lens kit. I am using a foot pedal with this setup, and I just have the total amps set up to 140, and thus the foot pedal, you can vary that amperage. Another little mid-project feature that I decided to add was this handle sticking out the back. Uh, kind of twofold. I figured it'd actually be good to protect the propane hose line, and it actually helps out to move around the cart. I, the pieces came with these pre-bent um, ends, so hey, let's butt two of them up together, and it worked perfectly. Uh, I kind of showed a picture of this earlier of the actual casters that I used and it's just some cheap casters I found on Amazon. I'll throw the link down in the bottom, but they came with a one inch stud. And so I drilled through the bottom of that. And then you can see that I have the nut just right in there. It worked out perfectly for the ends. Yes, they are opened. Maybe I can get some little caps to close them. Either way, it's not that big of a deal. In the spirit of a DIY project and trying to use up as much stuff as you can, here's a daily double bonus for you. This is some cedar decking that I've had on the side of my yard for some time now. So, hey, that's two of things for one project. Just, uh, honey, don't look at the other hundred that's still piled up over there. Beside the point, I'm getting rid of stuff, right? So I simply just uh, sanded it down and then I did create a little or a little fillet on the edge the stuff's you know I don't know do you care are you here for the welding stuff or are you here for the carpentry screw it up and this thing fit like a glove which you would really hope so since you use the frame as a jig so I don't know whether you care. I got some bare outdoor stain. It's actually what I used on a bunch of other projects. So I didn't have to go out and buy anything. Uh, just make sure if it's going to be outdoors, you're going to want an outdoor stain. Now, I don't know. This is kind of like watching paint dry, right? Does anyone really care about this part? Nope. Let's continue on. 
Now, I typically like a good-looking weld shown, and I mean, it's artwork, so you want to show off what you did. Unless it's a really bad one, then you gotta grind and redo. Either way, since this was on the handle, these were some of the final touches that I did to the actual frame itself. I just ground and resurfaced it, give it just a nice top finish, but the rest of the welds I did keep. What are we on to? Maybe the third, fourth little extra feature that I hadn't really planned on in the beginning, but thanks to Amazon Next Day Shipping, I got these little shelf folding brackets, whatever they are, just to get that little extra space without taking up extra footprint space. Use the same teching as I did for the other counter, and we are set. And right into putting my boy to work. You gotta earn your dinner in this family. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know why. He's in this big cleaning phase, so heck. Have at it, clean the garage floors all you want. Not that anyone's counting, but this is the third item that I pulled out of the scrap bin. So I, I think there was some old metal shelving or something. I don't know, been that long. Cut the little notch out for the propane tank and it fits in there perfectly. And I'm not gonna lie, for a simple weekend DIY project, the extra little features didn't add too much and I love how it turned out. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.